Joaquin Guzman. Also known as El Chapo, this Mexican drug lord was born in the 1950s in the western Mexico state of Sinaloa. As a boy, he dropped out of school and later became the world's biggest mafia and the leader of the Sinaloa Drug Cartel, which was one of the world's most powerful drug trafficking organizations and one of the most ruthless criminal network in the history of Mexico. El Chapo had been the main target of an international manhunt since 2001 since he broke from a Mexican prison where he was serving a 20-year punishment. On February 22, 2014, this world's most wanted drug trafficker was arrested in a U.S.-Mexican sting operation near Mazatlan, Mexico, after outrunning the Mexican law enforcement agencies for more than a decade. In July 2015, El Chapo broke out from Mexico's top security Altiplano prison by a mile-long tunnel. But the question is, how did he do it, and how exactly El Chapo escaped from a top security prison? In today's video of fun facts, we are about to find out. Arturo Fontes, a retired FBI agent who had spent over a decade studying El Chapo's case, said, Chapo didn't do it alone. He undoubtedly had help from various sources both inside and outside of the prison. Prior to tunnel digging, El Chapo's powerful drug cartel bought a small piece of land close to the Altiplano prison so that they could begin building small homes as a cover for their secret operation. However, the house did not have any interior, as they were not planning to live there. The so-called house provided just the cover needed to start constructing the tunnel that would free El Chapo. Inside the secret tunnel under the Mexican countryside, a few men were non-stop working with axes and shovels. Cautious enough to make any noise that might give them away, they even used to pause their work as the prison patrol crosses overhead. In the meantime, they were listening to the vibrations of moving vehicles above them. The digging took place almost 30 feet below the prison's main yard, and there was indeed a little chance of being seen and caught. However, after six months of deep tunneling, they didn't want to take any chances, especially when they were so close to the prison cell of Mexico's most famous drug lord, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. For several months, they were tunneling through solid rock with nothing more than handheld axes and shovels, going as fast as they can with their confined hand equipment. The tunnel digging would go much prompt only if they could use electronic tunnel digging machines such as jackhammers and boring machines, but that would create noise, drawing a great deal of attention to their working place which was just a mile away from the prison perimeter. But the tunnel digging team was facing incredible pressure to complete the task as Mexican authorities could anytime relocate El Chapo due to his past records of escaping prison and baffling police incursions. Each day, the little progress tunnelers made could be for nothing if Mexican authorities transfer El Chapo to somewhere else. But that was not the only matter of concern. The unfinished buildings on an empty field were started to raise the question of why would someone start construction on an empty? It also mystified local officials and curious villagers. The tunnel crew knew that time was running out and pressure was mounting up. Inside the prison, El Chapo was an ideal model for the prisoner. Despite his long history of horrific violence, El Chapo kept a friendly and ever-pleasant attitude towards guards and his fellow prisoners. Yet the authorities didn't want to take any chances. His conversations over the phone and mail were carefully monitored by prison officials, but not a single indication of the ongoing was ever spotted. El Chapo was very professional by now, but his patience was running out. The crew knew they had to move fast. Despite incredible pressure, the tunnel diggers, however, managed to reach El Chapo before any potential prison transfer. Digging tunnels produced dirt and a lot of it. All those dirt, though, had to go somewhere, and so the tunnelers cleverly laid down rail tracks on the ground and used a motorcycle to shuttle two carts back and forth, which were filled with dirt. Upon carts' arrival, others would spread the dirt evenly around the field rather than dropping it in large piles, which would, of course, draw attention. Yet, the fresh dirt scattering acres of empty fields and the questions raised for that would not be easy to answer. Once El Chapo escaped from jail, he would ride on that same motorbike and travel the mile distance to freedom. The classy prison escape took place in the middle of the night on July 12, 2015, when the sound of metal scraping came from El Chapo's shower inside his cell. Moments later, the ceramic base of the shower leaped up and there was a friendly face waving El Chapo from the darkness below. 
Without wasting any time, the drug lord climbed down 30 feet into the secret tunnel. The tunnel was only wide for one man, and the crew had made sure that tall enough so the boss wouldn't have to hunch while walking through. Diving a few feet into the tunnel, El Chapo mounted on a small motorcycle that had been attached with previously made metal tracks. Just seconds after leaving his cell, El Chapo was cruising through the tunnel like a teenager does on a Disneyland park ride. Minutes later, El Chapo ended his joyride and climbed up from the tunnel into the empty shell of a home where his crew had eagerly been awaiting to greet him. After changing his prison clothes, El Chapo hopped into a vehicle and vanished into the darkness of the night, leaving behind a mile-long secret tunnel and both a frustrated prison system and the Mexican government. Prison officials later said, The tunnel was built with sophistication. A tunnel of that extent should have taken at least 18 months to two years to construct. The walls were strengthened by wood panels where needed, and a generator pumped fresh air 24-7 to keep the tunnel oxygenated. However, the taste of freedom didn't last long for El Chapo. Soon, the Mexican president Enrique Peña Nieto began a massive manhunt as underway to find Guzman. His hiding site was exposed weeks before his arrival by some of his careless, heavily armed bodyguards. Immediately, Mexican officials put the house under heavy surveillance and intercepted every communication and found messages such as grandma or aunt were coming to visit. Mexican intelligence immediately realized this grandma or aunt could be a code for El Chapo's arrival. They were waiting for the right chance to strike. And one month later, special forces raided the home and killed several of El Chapo's bodyguards. But El Chapo and one of his most senior lieutenants somehow managed to escape via another secret tunnel which opens up a mile from the safe house. They stole a vehicle at gunpoint, though the car owner immediately reported it to the police. After announcing a red alert for this stolen vehicle, police officers traced the car and took El Chapo and his lieutenant under arrest. One and a half year of restless work and planning all went in vain when El Chapo was finally caught just after months of his escape. But El Chapo wouldn't go that easily. After being caught, he tried to buy his freedom. As the Mexican public officers in the past were easily corruptible, El Chapo tried to bribe the police officers with money, homes, and even lucrative job opportunities if they set him free. But the desperate drug lord, however, didn't know that this was a whole new breed of Mexican police. All four officers declined El Chapo's offer. Soon, his lavish offers turned into threats. The officers sent proof of El Chapo capture to their superiors, only to be warned that in the meantime, police had received an intel that 40 heavily armed assassins were coming to free El Chapo. But the reinforcement was still on their way, so the officers were told to relocate to a secure motel nearby where they could prepare for a possible shootout. Till then, El Chapo was laughing and repeating his earlier threats telling them that they were about to die, and after them, their families would suffer the same fate. Meanwhile, a convoy of vehicles was seen heading towards the motel. In the blink of an eye, officers loaded their M16 rifles for holding their ground, and they were ready to die if needed. As the vehicles closed in and the glare of the headlights dimmed and the officers could see, it was the reinforcement of Mexican soldiers who came to take up defensive positions around the motel. El Chapo's taunts all of a sudden disappeared. A few moments later, defeated and miserable looking, El Chapo was dragged into a police zip and sent off to a nearby airfield. Two years later, the government of Mexico approved an extradition request to the US. Thus, El Chapo's hope of ever escaping again was annihilated. In US custody, this Mexican drug lord sentenced to life imprisonment. So this was how the world's most notorious drug lord, El Chapo, broke out of his prison cell through a mile-long underground tunnel and recaptured within just six months of his escape. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Leave a like if you want to see more of these videos. It really helps the channel, but for now, I hope to see you again soon.